Okay, here's a video for you. This is a problem, the half atwood machine with friction. Okay, so we start off with the table, and then there's a pulley, there's a block up here, we'll call it M1, string, M2. Okay. And so the question is, what's the acceleration going to be for these two things? I could do it with, without friction, uh, but now I'm going to do it with friction. So let me start off by drawing a free body diagram for the two masses. Here's mass one. I have the gravitational force, M1, G. I have the normal force, N. Yep, that's fine. And then I have the tension, T. And then I have a frictional force. Now, I actually don't know the value of the frictional force. I don't know if it's the same size or not as the, as the tension. So I'm just going to draw it like this, and we'll talk about, uh, let's say it's just F friction for now. Whether it's static or kinetic, we're going to figure that out. Okay. Now I can draw uh, M1, M2. This marker kind of is not great. Maybe this marker will be better. Yeah, look at that. M2 is going to be just this. There's only two forces on mass 2, M2G, and the tension. Now, here the tension is probably going to be less than mass 2 if the thing is accelerating that way. Probably. But it might be at rest. It might, it might be stuck there. Okay. If the friction is high enough, it will stay there, and then these two would be the same. So the value of the tension depends on what happens in the situation. We actually don't know the value of the tension. Okay, I'm going to write the, let's just assume for now that it's accelerating down. So this is accelerating down with the value in the negative A, and this is accelerating that way with the value A. I'm going to write the sum of the forces equation for this mass in the y direction. So that's going to be, sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be T minus M2G equals negative M2A. And so that's negative because I've assumed it's accelerating down, which it might not be. It might be at rest, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, but this is an important equation. Now I can write the Y equation for mass 1. Some of the forces in the Y direction, I only have two. I have the normal force minus M2G. I'm sorry, that's M1. Now that's going to be equal to zero. That's zero because this mass does not accelerate up or down. It's going to stay on that flat surface. So right away I can solve this and I get N equals M1G. That's important. Finally, I'm going to do the same thing in the, y, in the X direction. Now here I have the tension, which is the same value as up there, and minus the friction force. And then that's going to be equal to M1A. Okay, what is that friction force? Uh, that's an important equation, but I want to use the model for friction. If it's a static friction force, then it's going to be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. If it's, if it's sliding, then it's going to be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. And typically, this coefficient kinetic coefficient is less than the static coefficient. But let's just say it's some coefficient right now. It's some coefficient. Okay. And if I use this to plug in for N, that N is equal to M1G, then the friction force is going to be equal to mu M1G. Let's just say it's sliding for now. Okay. So I can rewrite this equation as T minus mu M1G equals M1A. I, I want to try to find that acceleration. So let me solve this one for T, plug it into there, and then I won't, I'll have an equation with no T. So here T equals M1A plus mu M1G. And if I substitute that in up here, I get M1A 
plus mu m1g, that's the whole t part, and then I have minus m2g equals negative m2a. I want to solve for the a. So if I get all the a terms on one side, all the non-a terms on the other side, that'll be good. So I can add this to both sides, and I can subtract that from both sides. So I get m1a plus m2a equals m2g minus mu m1g. And I did this problem in class without friction, and we just didn't have that term. Okay. Now I can factor out the a, divide by m1 plus m2, and I have my answer. a equals, I skipped a step, but you can go back and check for yourself. m2g minus mu m1g over m1 plus m2. That's the acceleration. Okay, now let's think for a second. What if the coefficient of friction is such that this term on the top is negative? What would that mean? That would mean that this friction is great enough that it would accelerate that way. That does not happen. <laughs> it does not happen, okay? So if I get an acceleration that would make this negative, in fact, the friction would be too high, and it would just sit there. Okay. If the friction force is too low, and then if it, that's fine. Anything low, as long as this is positive on the top, it's going to work. This system, left by itself, will not accelerate that way. There's no way. So it's either going to have A is equal to positive, or A is equal to zero. There can be no negative. So you can put in whatever values you want right here. You can actually even say, what if A is equal to zero, what minimum coefficient would I have? You could plug that number in. I'm not gonna do that, I just wanna set up the whole problem for you. Uh, but that, you can follow along and see this is similar to the problem with no friction. But adding friction just adds a little bit more. 